Hi, this is Dave Worden. I would like to talk a little bit about using a, a tuner, an electronic tuner like this one, in a way that perhaps you have not used it yet. Now we're all familiar with these devices, many of us own them. You normally would play your tuning note and see how it is or play certain notes on your instrument, perhaps even leave it running while you're practicing to see where you might be going sharp or flat and you didn't realize you were doing so. And that's all good. That's good practice, good thing to do. You, knowledge is power. So if you, if you know you typically go sharp on this note, even though it may not be a sharp note on the instrument, but perhaps your ear hears it a different way or you get excited about a particular passage and you just blow in such a way the horn goes sharp, those are good things to know about. But I also found that they're excellent for using during a band rehearsal or an ensemble rehearsal of any kind. Now people frown on that. But we have to remember, we're only gathering information. It doesn't mean you want to be the only one who's right, for example. But it's good to know what's going on. Often when I've been playing with an ensemble, I'll feel like, man, I'm, I'm creating some real intonation problems. It's very out of tune. And I'll move it up, and that doesn't seem to help. I move it down a little bit, that doesn't seem to help. When I started using the tuner and that would happen to me, I, at some point, would just stop playing and I'd see that the tuner was still fighting to find a pitch because it sounded just as bad without me. So there was no way to tune that, that note because there was no agreement. That's one thing it can tell you, but it can also help you find out where you are. You can, as I said, you may be going sharp on a particular note, and it may be one you didn't go sharp on during practice because sometimes we play at a different volume during rehearsals or performances. I wouldn't use this for performance, by the way, just for rehearsal. Um, but we do things differently from our normal set up and tune your horn mode. When we're in actual playing conditions, we might do things differently. So I do find it's a good tool. Also, it's good even when you're not playing to see where the band or the orchestra is going. They may be leaning kind of sharp, especially if the rehearsal goes on a ways. As the instruments warm up, they'll tend to go a little sharper. So it's kind of good to know what your tendencies are within the group, uh, what the group's tendencies are. You may have a section that plays sharper or flatter than another section, and that's good to know as well. I found that when I'm playing with cornets, for example, um, if most euphoniums tend to be sharp on the high F concert or G in treble clef, that's pretty comfortable usually when you're playing with cornets because they're kind of sharp on that as well. French horns don't seem to be as sharp on that. Um, so when you play with them, you want to be much closer to right, and the tuner can help you learn some of those kind of things. The problem you may have, though, is you'll have the tuner on your stand and you'll be playing a B-flat along with the ensemble and the tuner says A-flat or something different. That's because it's hearing somebody else and not you. There's something you can do to help that. There's an accessory for the thing and it costs, you know, I don't remember, I think it's maybe $15 or so. It's a microphone cable. And it goes here. There's an input on the tuner. Then it's got this microphone on the other end of it that has a clip, and it's, it's rubberized in here, so it's not going to scratch the instrument. So you put it on your bell like that, and then you're more sure that it's going to pick up your pitch instead of those around you. But because your instrument may be resonating with the other instruments in the ensemble, um, not 100% dependable, but it makes it a lot more sure that you're looking at your own notes. When you stop playing, you'll still be picking up other instruments because, again, they're vibrating or the microphone's picking them up. When you're not blowing so much louder the microphone can't hear them, it will hear them and it'll show you what the other uh, players are doing. So two things you can do with a, a, a tuna like this you may not have thought of before, and I found it helpful. Once again, you don't want to be the, the pitch police during the rehearsal. This is for your information to help you adjust to what's going on around you. It's your director's job to be the, the police in terms of what the overall effect is. It's your job to fit in with the ensemble the, the best way you can. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for listening.